So it's December, or knowing my upload schedule, January, and everyone's freaking out about the loss of Adobe Flash Player at the end of the year. What was once THE medium for creating online content will be nothing but a memory come 2021. For those that don't know, Adobe Flash was a program to create just about anything web-related, but it was mostly used to create games and animations. Since its popularity boom in the late 1990s, Flash was the go-to program for anyone who wanted to make their own cartoon or game. And since Flash was relatively easy to learn, that meant that anyone could create whatever they wanted, and with Adobe Flash Player being supported by most browsers, they could easily share it on websites like Newgrounds. This led to a burst of internet content, usually created by the weird kids that made ninja stars in the back of your 10th grade biology class. These same kids also decided to make Flash creations based on their favorite franchises, and I think this was the first time you really saw fan-made works on the internet. Before fan fictions of Hamilton characters getting AIDS in high school came videos of Sonic fighting Dragon Ball Z-style battles while Let the Bodies Hit the Floor played in the background. And I think you know which one I prefer. However, over the years, Adobe Flash Player has found itself to be kinda old and busted and kind of a security threat, so it's been slowly phased out by things like HTML5. I think everyone saw the writing on the wall for years, but after 2020, Adobe Flash Player will no longer be available, making viewing these masterpieces in their original form to be impossible. So, in light of Flash's end of life, I want to look back at some of the old Flash creations that have shaped me. Specifically, I want to talk about Sonic-related flashes, because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with Sonic. I'm still obsessed with Sonic. I don't know what it was about the early 2000s and Flash Sonic content, but it seems like people were about as obsessed as I was about the franchise. Back then, you could throw a rock and you'd hit five videos of Sonic fighting Mario or whatever. I think it may be because a lot of this stuff came out before Sonic 06 no longer made Sonic cool to the average person. It could also be because of the rise of Dragon Ball Z in the late 90s and 2000s, since Sonic was partly inspired by the series. Regardless, when I was younger, I had more than enough Sonic-themed media to mindlessly consume. My Flash game consumption involved three main websites. The ever-famous Newgrounds, Y8, and a little website called dandare.org. I think my first ever Flash game, and possibly first ever video game period, was a Flash port of Donkey Kong on Y8. I then moved on to various Mario Flash games until I came across Ultimate Flash Sonic, possibly the most famous Sonic Flash game, and the rest is history. However, I think a couple years ago, Y8 purged all of their copyright unfriendly games from the site, so there's not much to talk about there anymore. Now, I would say that most of my Flash time was taken up by one website, Dandare. I've never heard anyone talk about this, but it was awesome. It was basically a repository for Flash games for a bunch of video game and cartoon properties, and the Sonic and Mario portions were absolutely stuffed. Not only did they have a ton of games from both series, but they had animations, pictures, and cubes. I will always refer to this exact color as Dandare Blue, and my mind will never forget the iconic Dandare Beige. I didn't really know what Newgrounds was until later, so most of my time was spent on this one website endlessly perusing the list to find any games I hadn't played in a while. It was through this website that a lot of my early video game memories come from, and cemented my love for both of these franchises. And I guess the official games were good too. I think it's only appropriate to start with the most well-known Sonic Flash game. Ultimate Flash Sonic. This Sonic the Hedgehog Flash Online game is 1.43 megabytes in size, so please allow some time for it to load. Adorable. I've noticed this game being covered a lot recently, so I don't think I have much to say here. It's a decent recreation of the Sonic Advance style gameplay, although it is seriously buggy. Going back to it now, I can see a lot of weird quirks and physics glitches that makes it not very fun to play. It's also really short, too. After you get Trough 2 Zones, the game is over, which feels incomplete for a game called Ultimate Flash Sonic. But hey, it was 2004, I'll give them a break. They were certainly passionate about Sonic. In fact, the opening scene tells the audience to buy Sonic Advance 2, the best game ever. Although Sonic Advance 2 is the first game I ever owned for the first console I ever owned, I wouldn't exactly agree with that sentiment, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. This game is a Sonic-themed quiz, so there's not much to say here except that this guy messed up one of the questions. Most sources say that Sonic is 15, not 16, so I don't know if this person is really qualified to say what I do or do not know about Sonic. Also, when you win, you are rewarded with an abysmally low-quality video of the Sonic Sad AM intro. When you think about it, this is probably released before YouTube made it possible to just search this up whenever you wanted, so this must have been a real treat to stumble across, which really puts things into perspective. It wasn't always so easy as a simple YouTube search. 
Anyway, whoever created the quiz game at least has a better track record than the creator of this Who Wants to Be a Millionaire clone because there are definitely not eight different emeralds in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. There's the seven Chaos Emeralds and the seven Super Emeralds and then the Master Emerald, which makes it 15, so... And there are five Sonic shows now, but definitely not when this game was made. I also won the game and I still haven't received a check in the mail, so I think we can classify this guy as a hack. Sonic Boom was a game I remember having a specific appreciation towards, and after playing it again I can kinda see why. The basic gameplay loop is that you select a stage and a character and blast them from a cannon. The farther you go, the more rings you get, and you can use those rings to unlock extra characters. Although there are quite a few unlockable characters, I couldn't find any difference between them, and the stage layout is randomized every time, so there's not much strategy involved. You just pick a middling angle, hold the charge button, shoot, and see where you go. You can pick up extra rings and items along the way, but it's basically random chance. To access the final level, you have to pick up all seven Chaos Emeralds, but they're so small they're practically impossible to collect. Thankfully, you can buy each of them for 200 rings. The final level is a pretty basic final boss where you play as Super Sonic, but it's still a neat addition. You also burn up the rings you've collected while you're in super form, which is a nice touch. So although it's not really that involved, I still had a lot of fun with this game. Maybe it's just because I like it when a game is as simple as pressing a button and watching cool stuff happen and I'm a filthy casual, but I almost don't care. Smash Bros is gonna be sweet! <laughs> I heard you can play as Peter Pan! I heard you can play as Mrs. Game & Watch! There were also quite a few Smash Brothers fan games around this time. The two I remember most fondly were Super Smash Flash and Sonic Smash Brothers. You may know Super Smash Flash 2 is a really well done Smash clone, but before that there was the original Smash Flash, and it is rough. There's only two buttons, attack and jump, and it comes with the jank you would expect from an early 2000s fan game. There's none of the weight you would expect from a Smash game, and the whole thing feels like you're just hitting a bunch of balloons around. Sonic Smash Brothers has the same problem, but it also has an animated intro with trace character portraits and really bad sound mixing. You didn't think we were gonna miss it, did you? What took you so long? Anyway, at the very least, Super Smash Flash has a ton of content. It's got a ton of classic Smash modes and 28 characters. Although this cast includes two Sonic OCs, so I guess even the roster isn't safe from the early 2000s. I also played a lot of the Super Smash Flash 2 demo that was out around this time. I think it was version .3C. There's not much to say here other than I felt it deserved to mention, because I spent a lot of time beating up Mario as Sonic. I also really liked how Super Sonic had his own moveset. He wasn't just a flying hitbox like he is in the real Smash games. I don't really like how they changed that in later versions of the game, but I'm glad they at least changed the physics. Surprisingly enough, Super Smash Flash 2 was almost as janky as its predecessor when this version came out, but thankfully it's about as good as an official Smash game now. Although they never made Mr. Incredible come back, so Smash Flash 2 will forever live in the shadow of its prequel. This one I'm really proud I was able to find. For years I had this memory of playing a Sonic Flash game that was set in a factory and had RPG elements. Turns out I finally found it, and it was called Sonic Flash. So the generic title probably didn't do me any favors in finding it. Anyway, I was really excited to play the game I've been thinking about for years, and it turns out it's not that great. I really like the idea. It's a slower paced action RPG with a darker aesthetic, but it's just really difficult. It's hard to tell where the hitboxes are, and I ended up getting knocked around a lot because of it. I didn't feel any different when I leveled up, and the bosses had ridiculously high health bars. Although I was able to get to two bosses, I wasn't able to come close to beating either of them. There's also this really long maze-like level that required me to be level 10 to access the rest of it, and by that point I had already gone through the other stages several times and I was only level 3. So although I'm really glad I found it after all these years, I don't think I'm going to be finishing it anytime soon. I just want to give a quick shout out to the Flash Sonic the Hedgehog for the biggest bait and switch of all time. When I first saw this, I originally thought that this must be a Flash port of the original game due to its generic title. Then when the game loaded, I was presented with all four of the original Sonic games and their levels. Sounds great, right? A way to play all four Sonic games and each one with a level select. Nope. It's a jukebox. And it's not even a fully functioning one as you only get a short 30 second iTunes snippet of each song. At this point, the only interesting thing to do is to play all the songs at once. That's the sound of 25 years of Sonic! Also, while browsing Newgrounds, I found this gem for the description of Dress Up Sonic Hedgehog. I'm not gay, but I am a Sonic fan. I've made this clear in the past. 
This description seems to be referencing past events that I am devastated I never got to experience firsthand. One thing I am not is a fanboy, so I enjoy seeing Sonic in unusual situations, including this since it's unusual to see him wear clothes. If I were to make this a dirty game like you all think slash want it to be, I would have drawn on a penis. Did I? No. Okay. This game is simply called Sonic Demo 2. It's insanely buggy and bare bones, but I can't help but find the charm in it. This is definitely just some random guy who really likes Sonic, but doesn't have a whole lot of game creation experience, but he goes ahead and makes a Sonic game anyway. That's something you don't see much of anymore. It seems like the quality of fan games has gone up drastically, but games like this have sort of faded away. Let's take a break from specifically Flash games and look at another medium of Sonic content. Animations. There were an insane amount of Sonic animations coming out in the day. You could talk about Super Mario Bros. Z and VGDC until the cows come home, but for now I want to highlight some lesser known movies. There's the classic Sonic short series, which I always like to come back to once in a while, and revisiting it makes me wonder if it was the cause of my current status of a germaphobe. on me. That means I'm gonna catch the emo. There's also this neat Sonic collab tribute made by basically the same team, which I always enjoyed. Sonic Paradox is just a really cool bunch. And I just remembered this awesome Sonic music video created by... Uh-oh. Like the games, they're amateur productions, but I almost prefer the rougher works than the more polished animations we get now though that's definitely just the nostalgia for the wilder days of the earlier internet. Anyway, while looking back at old animations, I came across this one. Super Smash Bros. X, Mario vs. Sonic. I went to the reviews and saw this. Saw this for the first time when I was a child back in 2004. I've always loved it and wished the creator would have continued. I went onto his now defunct website back in 2004 and saw an update a friend of his had posted before the site shut down. It said that he was missing and that no one knew of his whereabouts except a letter the police received saying that he is being tortured with jumper cables and we are sending jolts of electricity to his testicles. I have wondered what has happened ever since because his site was shut down a week later. He was working on part 3 of the series where it was an old shirtless man holding a drumstick, piece of chicken, and he said on the site that it was going to be the old man versus the guy from Final Fantasy with the bomb on. I'm sorry, what? After seeing this, it was the only thing I was able to think about for weeks. Eventually, I decided to perform an entire investigation to get to the truth. I went to arrogancy.net on the Wayback Machine and started scouring the updates to see if I saw any clues to his current whereabouts. I am sad to report that Aaron McRae, owner and creator of arrogancy.net, has passed away as of 5.32am GMT due to heart complications brought about by repeated and continuous applications of electric genital torture. Then the very next day, another post was made on the website. I am now a ghost. Boo. Woo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this was just a joke from Aaron. So does this poster know now, or is he doomed to a lifetime of thinking his beloved animator icon is currently being tortured via electroshock? He will probably never know what happened to him. And that icon looks a little familiar. Also, on an interesting note, this was uploaded on September 10th, 2001 at 9.49pm Eastern Standard Time, making it one of the last pieces of media ever created before 9-11. Wow. The whole arrogancy debacle makes me think about another difference about those times, the sense of mystery that surrounded each user. Today, everyone has their full name, age, weight, and credit card number available on every social media platform there is. I mean, I bet you can't even name a single YouTuber that hasn't done a face reveal yet. They just don't exist. Here's an example. This is Sonic Kids Episode 1, a Flash series about the Sonic characters as children, and this is apparently the only episode available according to the creator's page but I swear to God there was a whole mini franchise surrounding this series. I remember there being Christmas and Halloween specials, a soundboard, and a Knuckles page on MySpace. I swear there was even a dedicated website with a map of the Sonic Kids town. This was definitely so much bigger than the original Newgrounds page would have you believe, but I can't find evidence of this existing beyond the first episode anywhere. 
It doesn't help that Sonic Kids is an insanely generic Google search term. Some people are obsessed with finding that one anime about girls locked in a bathroom that totally definitely 100% exists, but this is my lost media white whale. Now granted, I haven't done much investigation aside from a few Google searches, but I'm still really interested in seeing if this was some weird dream I had or not. Okay, so I actually did some research and found a little more information. I was able to find the creator's DeviantArt page, and although it's been inactive since 2010, he did confirm the existence of additional episodes, up to six if I'm not mistaken. He linked to a Sonic Kids website to view them, but the website is down and the Wayback Machine doesn't support Flash. So unfortunately, I think everything past the first episode is just lost to time. I was never really into Sonic Kids anyway, but it's still disappointing that my search ended up in a dead end. Also, that background gives me some serious early 2000s vibes. I don't know how they did it, but they somehow made a series of blue and black colors look nostalgic to me. Or maybe I'm just undergoing brain rot from all the Sonic media I'm consuming and I'm just seeing 2000s everywhere, I don't know. I feel that the best way to end this off is to look at the two mammoth-sized Sonic Flash projects, Sonic RPG and Final Fantasy Sonic X. That is a mouthful. Both of these are turn-based multi-part epics with stories I never really cared about. However, since this could be my last chance to play these games, I may as well pay attention to the story this time. And I do mean last chance. Usually Flash Newgrounds games would be available indefinitely via the Newgrounds player, but for some reason, these games' Newgrounds pages have been replaced with a video walkthrough, meaning that they will literally be unplayable at the end of the year. Unless you have the SWF file, but I don't feel like searching the internet for that. Final Fantasy Sonic X is mostly just a mess of RPG tropes and weird crossovers. You got Sonic, Mega Man, Soma Cruz from Castlevania, Link, all sorts of characters are involved in this incomprehensible story. There's something about a precious sword and a gate, but I wasn't really paying much attention. It doesn't help that the font in the earlier episodes is really hard to read. I think the highlight for me was when Sonic starts out with really weird, smooth Sonic 3 graphics, gets absolutely destroyed, requires plastic surgery, yes, I'm serious, and changes to his Sonic Battle sprites for the rest of the series. It's just such an odd choice, and Sonic doesn't really seem to care too much that his entire body was reconstructed. In fact, nobody seems to be taking this seriously. Dude, come on. You hurt my friends. And Tails. What is this guy's problem with Tails? The creator himself is probably the most interesting thing about these early episodes, as he keeps insisting that he is leaked at Halo 2 and tests you to prove him otherwise. I wonder if that offer still stands. However, I think when people talk about Final Fantasy Sonic X, they're mostly talking about the last two episodes. The last two episodes have a huge leap in quality, the visuals especially. Each one of them have a really well done anime style intro that looks really good. The last episode has a really fun battle system and even a little mini game slash quick time event. But I seriously cannot praise the presentation of episode 6 enough. Some of these attack animations are actually extremely hype. I'm surprised there hasn't been an RPG yet with super long sprite animations for special battles or boss fights. I would definitely be first in line to buy that. The characters, especially Sonic and Shadow, have some really good banter and chemistry that is seriously lacking in the official games. I don't remember there being any officially voiced trash talk in any of the recent games, but after playing this, I'm convinced there should be. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's take off his shoes. Don't touch the shoes! It also helps that they have a pretty talented voice cast, including Knuckles, who is voiced by... Uh-oh. After nearly a decade, I was convinced that the series would never get a conclusion. But surprisingly enough, in 2018, the creator of the series, Black Devil X, announced his work on the next episode, and it looks just as good as the last. Even though the beginning of the series had a rocky start, I actually really hope the next episode comes out eventually. I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. I feel like I haven't moved in a decade. I remember playing Sonic RPG a lot more than FIFA 6, so I think I'll have some more to say about this. 
I think it was because of the more frequent update schedule, but I honestly don't remember. Anyway, the first episode of Sonic RPG is just amazing garbage. The graphics consist of terribly drawn traced sprites, the story is really fanfic -y, and the writing in general is just fantastic. Special mention to this one scene. I guess art imitates life after all. This seems to only be a problem with the first episode, because from 2 on, the writing and art becomes much more passable, and by around episode 4, they actually found out how to rip sprites. Good for them. So the story of Sonic RPG is basically sprite animated fanfiction. Eggman, called Robotnik in this for some reason, he's been Eggman for years at this point, takes Sonic's and Shadow's DNA to create a clone he calls... Sonow. Yeah. Fortunately, the clone cringes so hard he creates a much cooler name. Sielkadoom. Sielkadoom? Selkadoom? Wow. What follows after is a series of crossovers, scripted battles, and all-around edginess. However, I can't help but really enjoy it. It must have been a ton of fun to make. Over the course of the series, you can see the creators improving. The battles become more fleshed out, and they even get a voice cast. <laughs> See you later, moron! An amateur voice cast. Episode 5 even has a fully explorable dungeon, complete with random encounters. Although I later found out they aren't actually random encounters. I tried to grind and realized there's only two scripted battles and a boss fight. But it's still an improvement. The later episodes even have Super Mario Bros. Z tier animations for their fight scenes, and the RPG battles get pretty interesting when they're not ridiculously difficult. Even though the story never really improves, it was still interesting to watch play out, and surprisingly enough, it actually was still being updated, although updates have slowed tremendously. The first three episodes released in 2005, the next three in 2006, and one a year until the release of Episode 8 in 2008. Then there was a six year break until episode 9 came out in 2014, and the final episode was released on December 26th, 2020. Geez, cutting it close much? You can only experience this game the way God intended for five days. That is a bold artistic decision. But seriously, think about the dedication. This guy has been working on this game for 15 years. He started as a teenager and now he does taxes. And the later games are actually fantastic, too. Episode 9 is an action RPG, and 10 has this really fun ATB-like battle system. Each of the later ones have their own unique battle system, and they're all great. They have fully animated 2D cutscenes, and the sprite work is astounding. I seriously was not expecting to be blown away by the later games, but here we are. It could be my love of RPGs and nostalgia talking, but this might be one of the best Sonic fan games I have ever played. I would buy a full game of this in a heartbeat. I seriously was not expecting to like this as much as I did, but I am so glad I revisited Sonic RPG. Almost another day. See you some other day. Flash Player will no longer be usable in the new year, but it's not as apocalyptic as people make it out to be. Many websites have taken countermeasures to prepare for Flash's end of life. In Newgrounds' case, they created a Newgrounds player app that will allow you to access anything in their catalog as if Flash was never gone. Although most Flash content people remember will still be available, I still wonder about all the Flash stuff that time forgot. There must be hundreds, if not thousands, of abandoned websites out there that still use Flash, and they'll all be unavailable. We will quite possibly never be able to access them again, and I think that's the real downer about this whole thing. I don't even know a single all-Flash website anymore, but I can't help but feel sort of melancholic that tons of internet history is going to be completely lost. The heavy hitters, the cool math games, the new grounds will all be just fine. But I have to wonder what will happen to the smaller corners of the internet that are basically forgotten. I will never find that one lost Sonic Kids website, and Dandare will be basically useless. Plus, the Wayback Machine won't be able to play old Flash content anymore either, so a lot of internet preservation will be broken. So although the loss of Flash isn't as terrible as many make it out to be, I still feel like a bit of the magic of the 2000s internet experience will be gone forever. Internet content back then was much less curated. It felt more homemade. When I was revisiting these games, I felt a certain connection to the creators. I could tell that every one of them was created by just some random teenager with nothing but a love of Sonic and an internet connection. These people put in everything they had and threw in everything they saw as cool in order to make the best thing possible. 
I guess what I'm trying to say is that all of these Flash creations felt like they were created in parents' basements, but in a good way. They were raw, they were crude, and they were mostly poorly made, but they all came from a place of sheer fan passion. I'm not saying that people aren't passionate about media anymore, that's certainly not the case, but you hardly see this avenue of expression anymore. I feel like wild crossovers or genre shifts only exist in fanfictions nowadays, and I don't feel like reading garbage, I want to see garbage happen as it's animated very poorly by someone likely too young to vote and too dangerous to be left unsupervised. Is that really too much to ask? I think what really killed the appeal of amateur fan games and creations is the sheer quality and quantity of the stuff we have today. Fan games are way more popular now than ever, and they're also insanely polished. Every day it seems there's 10 more Sonic fan games, and they all look just as good, if not better, than the official releases. And sometimes these fans are so talented they make the official releases. However, these polished fan games take a lot of time, effort, and manpower to finish. Plus, the mountain-sized pile of great fan games that already exist must be pretty intimidating, as these games are typically compared against each other. So I feel like the fan game market has been left to people with an existing talent for game creation, and other fans are just too intimidated to start. You're much more likely to see someone make a simple Twitter post or some fan art if they don't think they're skilled enough to make a game or animation. In addition, these fan games now have to be actually downloaded and installed in order to play, which kills the quick and easy stream of content that Flash Player allowed for. You can no longer just click through a bunch of fan games in a couple of minutes, so you have to install each one and allow space for it on your hard drive. So although fan content is amazing now, the more amateur stuff doesn't really show up anymore. As that one guy from the all-female reboot of Star Wars once said, Let the past die, kill it if you have to. Star Wars man. I think that's a little harsh, but I don't necessarily disagree with that statement. I don't intend to end this video with a depressing statement about how everything is worse now, because that's not what I believe. Like I said before, I'm really happy that Sonic inspires talented people to make great things, especially when his more recent efforts tend to disappoint. Obligatory Sonic 06 mention. I'm not going to be like everyone else and start freaking out that the games I haven't played in over a decade are supposedly going away forever. But that doesn't mean I won't miss this era of the internet, one we may never get again. This was less of a eulogy for Flash and more of a retrospective on the silly things people made in the 2000s and the culture that surrounded them. This year marks the 30th anniversary of Sonic the Hedgehog, a franchise that, despite its ups and downs, has been a constant presence in my life. This presence comes in many forms, from the official games to explanations on why I'm not gay. So I mostly wanted to make this video to revisit some of my earliest memories of Sonic, and I'm glad I did. Although a big part of the 2000 Sonic experience is coming to a close, I'm really happy I was able to chronicle it for you guys. I may not know what the future holds for this series, but I reserve my right as a Sonic fan to complain about it. Um.